So howdy. Um, sorry about the light in here. I use a, uh, a floodlight for the garage. It gets dark early this time of the year. Uh, video 2 on my uh, South Bend 9B. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's a B based on the nameplate. Uh, but at the end I'll have a question and maybe someone will be able to answer. Uh, one of the first tasks um, I took care of getting the the uh, lead screw off. Um, I'm going to put this away for, for later. But uh, when I first got this, um, I couldn't get the compound cross slide to turn and I wasn't quite sure how it worked. So uh, I wanted to take it apart and figure it out. Um, for taking it apart was uh, not intuitively obvious. Um, and I think I'm going to do a complete disassembly video. You can reassemble by, uh, on all the parts when I take them apart. And you can kind of figure out how to put them back together by watching them in reverse. So uh, I'm going to bring the camera in close and show you from there. A lot of the bolts were uh, tough. I've already taken them apart once and put it back together just to show for the video. Um, so they're not going to be so tough when I take them off this time. But a lot of the bolts were tough. Um, especially uh, the two bolts that hold on the compound cross. Those were exceptionally tough and uh, I'll show you why when I when I get to that point. So let me bring you up close and we'll uh, we'll get right to it. Okay the compound cross slide sits in the saddle and is used to attach your tool using a tool post. Here's the one that came with this one just I think original to this or at least the style is. Um, yeah, it was set to uh, to 90 degrees uh, and probably could have stayed that way but when I couldn't get it to turn and I decided to dig into it. I wanted to take it apart anyways to clean so I figured uh, what the heck. This is all pretty heavy and it's attached to the side plate here still so I'm not going to turn it. Uh, I'll just describe. Maybe I'll turn a little bit. Oh, Yeah it's going to be tough for me over here. Um, there's two bolts that hold the side plate on over here. Uh, they are half inch. They have a very low profile head. Um, like I said, I took this apart already, so this is actually going to be pretty easy. I'll be able to do most of them finger tight. I didn't cinch everything up. Um, I have my oil kit coming later in the week, so I can actually oil things back down. But I'm going to clean them up. And I take the cover off, put it in the back, put all my parts right in the cover so they don't get lost. Um, the uh, the lead screw nut attaches with a uh, was it a uh, oh, nine sixteenths, and uh, you can take it off or you can just crank it right off. Uh, I took it off; it was easier. When I had originally done this, the ways were adjusted very tight, so I had to back the way the uh, the way the uh, the jib bolts. The jibs were adjusted very tight and I had to adjust the jib bolts out and I don't know if originally I'll take one of these out to show you there's an allen head inside of each one uh, for actual adjustment and then there's a nut on the outside I don't know if that's original or something someone added to keep them from backing out uh, I'll put this one back take this out And this lead screw nut actually is directional because I couldn't, when I put to put it back together, um, I, I had it on and I couldn't get it apart. <laughs> I couldn't get it reassembled. And that was because it, uh, it wouldn't line up right. When you have it apart, the jib will fall out, put that aside, and now we're left with the saddle. Uh, from the bottom, it's still not intuitively obvious how it all goes together. Uh, I have no idea what this screw in the end goes for. Uh, haven't got a clue. Sorry, I stopped because I wanted to make sure you could actually see where my hands were. I reviewed the video. Yeah, so like I was saying, I have no idea what this screw in the end for. I had removed it just because I thought maybe it was part of the removal process. Um, it's not. So you can leave the uh, the jib adjuster in place. You don't need to take them all the way out. In order to get the uh, let me move the saddle over as far as I can. In order to remove the saddle, uh, a couple things. Um, I, I couldn't rotate this at first, 
and uh, it, these are fairly tight. Um, again, these take uh, nine sixteenths, yeah, nine sixteenths, and you got to kind of back them off a little bit at a time from both sides because the screws are too tall to fit. So take them off a little bit at a time. And now I can actually turn it. Um, and it's actually easier to take off if you turn it to the side and I'll show you why in a minute. So. Couple more threads on this one. If you get uneven, then it becomes harder. I am uneven right now. Okay. Um, so let me show you why this was for the chip on mine right here in the corner. This piece is missing. So when you're first trying to take it off, uh, square to the uh, at 90 degrees to the face, parallel to the face. It's over here, and there's it can spin here. I mean, if it's right up against the edge, it's tight, but it's not as tight as if it is over here. So, pull these aside, put them over here. I'm done with the bottom half. Uh, nothing else I need to take apart here. I think I can punch this pin out, um, but I really don't need to. I'll just clean it and leave it in place. Um, this area here looks fairly decent, just dirty. Once I clean up the grease, it looks fine. Bottom, lots of grease in here. Um, let me see if there's any rust underneath any of that grease. No, it's just grease. So, I said this will clean up nicely. Let's get to the, uh, put the parts over here. Like I said, keep your jibs. Uh, to remove this was a bit of a challenge. Um, remove the uh, the top to the of it uh, I it, it seems like one of those puzzles is impossible because it can't go in either direction you can't you know, unscrew it all the way so what I ended up doing was taking out these tiny little screws here two of them like I, said, I cleaned these out these were tougher to take out and before you take put a put a screwdriver on these make sure it's the right size and clean the the, um, the head of it out. So I scraped out quite a bit of uh, gunk when I first took it out. And then you have to unscrew this. Uh, I have a wrench for it, but it seemed like there was a bit of play. Right now it's not because I took it off once already. So instead, I use an adjustable because um, I was using a uh, what was I using a three quarters and it's probably um, seven eighths. It's not seven eighths. I tried seven eighths, so it's got to be fifteen sixteenths or something like that. And I didn't have the size wrench, so using this, I was able to get it off. Like I said, this has already been loosened once, so it's not that hard. And just back this out. Once you have this all the way out, right now, then you just gotta unscrew from the nut inside. And there it is. The threads on it look good, but you're still left with this. And with this as well, the jibs were tight, um, so I loosened them up. The jib nut, uh, j the, the jib screw adjusters here. Because you kind of need to in order to get to it. The trick here, when you get to the end, you need to back the uh, nut out of the hole. And there's not a lot of clearance. So what I, I looked at it for 15 minutes before I figured it out. 
Um, and what I ended up doing was removing the jib entirely. So let me back these out all the way. Or back them out enough so I can take the jib out. And what that did was give me clearance, some working room. Um, okay. So now I'll just push that out. Put it aside. They are different lengths, so it's not you can't mix them up. Now I got a little bit of working room here. Um, there was enough grease here that I wasn't able to really see a seam at first, but there is a seam there. Um, and a small screwdriver, after you kind of just push it back and forth a little bit, you might be able to punch, but I just use a small screwdriver on that seam. And once I had the seam big enough, it didn't take a lot of wiggling. To make sure it's somewhat in the camera. For that I used a bigger screwdriver and I'm not forcing it. And I still need a little bit more. Now it's big enough. And with my fingers holding this part up and away, I was able to get the screwdriver in and pry it out, and then it slides right out. You can see the grease I'm talking about. That's what I want to remove. We have this apart. You can see this just fits in here. Like that. But like I said, it's one of those, it looks like an impossible puzzle. And it looks like this isn't entirely omnidirectional either, because the hole's not exactly centered. Um, from eyeball, I can see there, it's, it's off and up to the right, which probably means if I went to put it back in and head opposite direction, it would be tough. Um, well, I have this apart. I'm gonna screw this back in. I want to check for play. I want to, I want to check for play here. Well, they have it apart. Actually, I don't need it. It doesn't need to be installed there. And this is actually fairly tight. A little bit of wobble, but not not much. It's not too bad at all. So this is still plenty serviceable. Um, like I said, in, in use, I saw about a quarter turn before it engaged, and I'm thinking it might not be the thread. It might be how these two parts here engaged. So I'll take a look at it and see if I can figure it out. Let me put all this stuff to the side, because my question is, oh, I'm going to take this screw off. This screw here, like I said, is not uh, bi-directional. I only worked in one direction. Not to be mistaken with the band that my kids like. So this only goes on one that way. Um, and it looks like in order to take this lead screw out, I have to punch, but I'll, I'll take a look at that and do that as another video maybe when I take this apart. Uh, so let me put these things all aside. My question is when I started doing some research uh, about oiling specifically, this is a B model based on, oh, you know, my reading says 480 RB. It's got the gearbox, not the one with the two handles, just the one with the one. But uh, when they say for the oiling of the model, the A and the B both have a reservoir in the bottom of the uh, skirt. I don't remember what it's called. I'll bring this over here. Uh, a reservoir 
underneath here that you fill with this. What I'm curious is if I am missing a part that goes here. Um, and I haven't looked through all my boxes yet. Um, and maybe I have it. But uh, well, if somebody could tell me if there's supposed to be a part here, um, that would be great. And I can hunt one down if I need one because I, I don't have one. Um, some, you know, this is supposed to ride in a reservoir of oil is my understanding and there was a part that went around the back here and some of the pictures but I don't know if they're exactly the same model um, if they're in years uh, if I just have to oil this by hand um, or just fill the oiler cap up here and that's it um, yeah like I said I have a, I have a complete set of wicks coming and I'm going to rewick the entire device after taking it all apart and putting it back together um, and you know, degreasing and relubing. I'm not going to be painting. At least I don't plan to. So, yeah, so that's my question for this one. And hopefully somebody out there will see this and uh, knows the answer to it. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, removing the cross, uh, uh, the compound cross slide from uh, uh, South Bend 8, uh, 8N, uh, South Bend 9 uh, B and probably the same on the 9A and the 9C uh, model. I can't imagine they're all that different uh, from what I've seen so far. So, until next time. Thanks for watching.